please give a very warm welcome to Sarah Crossan. You know, when you're kind of sitting there and you're thinking, my story would be best told to my therapist in the morning. I'm not, <laughs> and I'm tr desperately trying to think of another story, but I think I'm just going to say what I came to say, which is, I came from a family um, where we weren't kind of a bookish family, um, and I, just in, in, to some extent, don't feel that I deserve a place on this stage. And it's, um, the, I'm gonna, so I'm going to talk about my psychological traumas for a little while. Um, I, came, I, I was from an Irish Catholic family, so um, storytelling is the thing in, in big Irish families. Um, and quietness is not a thing. Um, but I didn't know how to get any attention. I was from this huge, big family. Um, and I thought, if I'm really, really quiet and good, I will get some attention. I will be noticed for being really, really good. Um, and I remember taking a journey um, from Tottenham in London to um, Manor Cunningham in Letterkenny, County Donegal. And when I started that journey, I was in the car with my whole family, um, and when I started that journey, I thought to myself, if I don't talk, at some point, someone will ask me what's wrong. Um, and they will, want to, they will want to hear from me, and they'll want to hear my voice, and they'll say, Sarah hasn't spoken for ages. Um, we went all the way from Tottenham in London to Manor Cunningham, Letterkenny, County Donegal, um, without me speaking once, and not one member of my family <laughs> noticed that I hadn't spoken. <laughs> then we got to my family's house, um, and it's in Donegal, and everybody's talking, and everybody's telling stories, and everyone's really loud. And I realized at that moment that quietness was not going to pay, and that the only way that I was going to get any attention was to be a storyteller um, and so that's what I started to do stories became my superpower however even though I kind of felt like I could tell stories and I knew how to make people laugh in the pub um, I didn't really feel like I was one of those people who could ever kind of be a person who could go to Hay and the first time I ever went to Hay um, was was before the festival happened and I was taken on a romantic trip there by my boyfriend when I was 19 years old um, and there was this you know this wonderful place of books and I, I wanted to be an author and he said you could I mean millions of people write books your book could even be crap and you could get it published <laughs> Um, and I didn't even think that a crap book that I would write could get published. I ended up doing teaching, and I loved teaching because I got to talk about books all the time. I got to entertain young people all the time. Um, and I was teaching a lesson, and a student said, I was teaching a lesson about, like, live your dreams. You can be anything you want, man. Um, and then a student went, have you always wanted to be, like, a teacher? And... <laughs> it's, like, rude. Um... <laughs> But it was a valid question, and I said, no, I've wanted to be a writer. And the student said, well, you've got a cheek then telling us to live our dreams if you've not gone and lived your dream, um, which was really a, a, a lovely thing to say. And from that, I went and I applied to do a master's degree, and I went and I did creative writing. Um, and um, when I was doing my creative writing degree, it was the first time I went to Hay Festival, um, and I went to see all these writers um, so I could be inspired by these authors. Um, and I went as a steward, um, and uh, you know, in my high-vis vest. Um, and I went to see uh, Ian McEwan, who was a, I was a big fan of his work. And I, I, he was signing my book, and I'm in my high-vis vest. And, and I'm like going, oh, yeah, like I really want to be an author. And he goes, mm-hmm. And, you know, and then he looked up at me, and he could see my face, that I looked devastated, and he said, maybe you should come back as one then. Um, and that really stuck with me, and I thought, I'm not coming back to this festival unless I come back as an author. And in 2015, I, it was the first time that I went to the Hay Festival as an author, and it was this moment in my life which um, I remember as being absolutely horrendous because... Um, I was told I was doing a poetry event because I write, I write novels in verse and I also wrote, wrote a book um, about the transformative power of poetry and I was told I was going to speak to students about poetry. I thought, yeah, I'm going to go, like, go and talk to them about poetry. Um, and it said on the thing that there was sort of um, eight, 80 students that I was going to speak to. So I thought it was going to be kind of a highbrow event about me talking about poetry. And they said, oh, no, that's a typo. You're speaking to 800 kids. And I went, oh, God, like, I have no entertainment because um, you, you know, I wanted to be able to... Uh, 
hold the audience. Um, and the worst thing about it was, not only did I have to kind of entertain these 800 children, but before I went on, they had a comedian on in front of me. And then they go, and now, welcoming to the stage, I want to roar for Sarah Crossan! And I come on going... It was awful, and I had prepared a whole thing about poetry, and I was also going to recite Shakespeare, and I didn't know what to do. So I decided I was going to recite Justin Bieber instead. And I was like, when I was 13, I had my first love. Those nobody could compare to my baby, and nobody came between us, I could ever come above. And I start like, doing the whole rap from Justin Bieber. It was like the most awful moment of my life, but also the most incredible moment of my life, because the whole audience stands up, 800 children, they're going, yes! Like, totally down with the kids. And then that night, as though my day couldn't have got any better, when I went to the B&B, &B, the woman said, Sandy Toxvig slept in that bed last night. <laughs> and it was the best time of my life. But um, one of the most lovely moments of that day was really when a student came and I was signing the book, and she said, I hate books. And I went, oh, but I really love Justin Bieber. <laughs> But that was a lovely moment, and, and, <laughs> and you get to communicate with people that you might not normally get the chance to communicate with. And I think that as a children's author, the festival brings all these children to the festival who might not otherwise get to experience books, who live in areas where authors may not go out to visit them. And so the value added at those kind of events, you go away feeling like, I made a, maybe a little bit of a difference. And as a writer, as, as someone who wants to invest in young people, there's, there's nothing more special. So the Hay Festival really um, has made me want to be a writer. And when I came back, I felt like, you know what, maybe, you know, maybe I can do it. Like maybe someone like me can do it. So thank you so much, Peter. Really appreciate it.